But among other things, Nelson Mandela inspired a charity targeting black townships which had suffered under apartheid and through the onset of HIV AIDS. That charity is Africa Tikun. Richard Lubner is the head of the Australian arm of the charity and he joins us now. Great to have you, Richard. Thanks, Thanks for coming for having in. Me, so you and your family knew Nelson Mandela pretty well. What are some of your memories of him? Wow, there's a lot of incredible memories. The, the most important memories are the ones that would been, you know, have happened on the quiet, which was a typical of Mr. Mandela, you know. There was so much that went on that this world hasn't even uh, got a hint of. And we saw it for firsthand. We've had the, we had a situation where a young girl who had facial paralysis um, the mother had been sending him photographs and calls for help all the time. And this really uh, bore heavily on him. He contacted our family, my, my, my father and my brother in particular, to say, what can I do about this young child? And cut a long story short, they were able to go out to John Hopkins uh, Medical Center in the United States, bring back doctors to help perform the operation on this child in front of a whole range of South African doctors to now be able to treat other children with similar problems. Mandela appeared at the hospital to read bedtime story. You're right. We'll move on. Sorry, obviously. stories to, to this beautiful young girl. And um, with no fanfare, no media, he was able to sit with her mm. and successfully conduct the operation. Mm. So this was just typical of the man who would take time out for just one child. Mm. And what's been his uh, involvement over the years, how closely, that's a, a, mm. a lovely story that you've just told, how, how closely has he been involved in your charity? It's gotten Ongoing. less and less as mm. the years uh, progressed and fortunately they did ring fence Mr Mandela so you know that in, in terms of his time he was able just to apportion it where he could. But um, having his um, constant um, um, involvement in the early days helped spearhead our organisation internationally to be able to get the support that we wanted. We were lucky enough to bring him out to Australia in September of 2000 to host um, a number of functions to raise funds um, for the organization. So more than just a figurehead, the involvement came from the early days of meeting with my father and the late chief rabbi of South Africa who were instrumental in putting this organization together. And it's through his direction, through his ethos that our organization is what it is today and as impactful as it is today. But the greatest involvement he has is we manage ourselves according to the ethos of this man and that sets the foundations on how one should operate not just a charity but a business and one's life. It's under the principles of the Mandela mm. principles. We've heard a lot about uh, unification of South Africa mm. and that was his big hope. How did he bring white South Africans on board to make that happen? In so, in so many facets, you know, the, the bringing together of people one can do it politically um, in terms of what's uh, right from a political standpoint or from an economical standpoint. But again, I always come back to the principles of leadership and the principles of operating from the heart. Um, and he demonstrated through the simple principles of love, love for everyone um, across the board, how we should integrate, how we should operate as a community, as people. Um, and across the div div divisiveness of the white population at the time, mm. there were strong examples of how to do that. You never felt as a white South African that Mandela represented the Afrikaans community or the English community. He represented South Africans across the board and it was his unifying attention to you know, the unity and diversity of people that made South Africa manage that process so almost so seamlessly. What is... Uh Astonishing is the emotive response mm. he seems to produce in people. Do you have a, an answer, a reason for that from your experience yeah. of him? Again, it comes back to the nature of the man and it's a shining example across the board, across this planet of how we can live and how we should live and how we should operate with our fellow human beings. And whilst he was so instrumental in creating change for South Africa, he, set, he sent an aroma of love, compassion, humility across the world. People could resonate with that. He inspired true leadership. There wasn't um, m uh, individual motive behind Mandela. He was fervently um, passionate about justice, about compassion, about love. I recall you know, when questions were asked to him about 
Why don't you have a sense of vengeance or revenge for what has happened to you? And his answer was simply, the people who put me in those circumstances, the people who imprisoned me, they themselves were imprisoned in their minds. My emancipation was their freedom, was their emancipation. So when we see that as human beings across the planet from great leaders, John F. Kennedy's and Martin Luther King's, Mother Teresa's, etc., we, we resonate. We resonate to some degree. And that's why I think you find such an incredible connection to the leadership of the heart from someone like Nelson Mandela. Richard Lobler, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Thanks for having me on your show.